Hi guys, I just recently started to use Windows Phone and today I wanted to share my essential apps I need to have installed on every review unit to get my stuff done. So let's just start with the first one. The first one would be Tweedium and as the name already said, it is a Twitter app. As you can see, it looks very minimalistic, but pretty much as all the other Windows Phone apps, it therefore also looks very elegant. In the preferences, you have a lot of options to change the appearance. You can change the background color, the accent color, the timeline, the scroll position. So you have all the needed options here. You can change the view here as well. And then you also have advanced options to change the view again for source for tweet apps, show the timestamps, the links. So there is an option to get pretty much everything optimized. The app costs a little bit of money. And if you want push notifications, you will have to pay annually. But otherwise, I really like this app. I also use it on my all my Windows devices. And that's just the one I prefer. I know a few other people maybe prefer Ares, but since I already paid for that and use it on every device, that's my number one Twitter app. My next essential app would be my Feedly Reader, and this one is called Next Gen Reader. I also use that on my Windows devices. It is a universal app. As you can see here already, also looks very minimalistic, very clean, very nice. You have all the great options you could need here for general. Also, again, theming options, a bunch of other options, as you can see just here mark on scroll and mark on height. So there is a lot of customization. You have synchronization options. You also have article view where you can change the readability mode, for example, use the Google mobilizer, open in the browser, readability and readability also works really, really nice. If you just quickly check it, go into one app, for example, let's go into this one. You see the article. And if the article wouldn't be shown as a whole, just hit the mobilizer button. It will need a few seconds to refresh and you would get the whole article, which is really nice to see. I really like this app. It looks very stylish. It performs great and it has all the great options I would need from a Feedly reader. My third essential app would be shared folder. And maybe, yes, this is the one error I'm not so amused because every second time I actually start this browser, this happens. But still, it is worth it unless you maybe have a better alternative for me because I needed a file explorer that allows me to access my server here, that would be my server, and to transfer my files from my phone directly to my server. Of course, many of you could say, why don't you use OneDrive? Because my internet is just too slow and I want it to get done most of the times just directly from my server. And this app, it is very minimalistic, but it gets the job done. There aren't really a lot of options you have you can change, for example, what you want to see, the shared folder, the Samba, OneDrive, WebDAV, FTP, phone. I'm pretty sure there are better file explorers out there. But for at least for now, this was the only one that allowed me to directly access my server. And that's why it is essential to me. Number four of my essential apps would be MyTube. And I'm pretty sure all of you already know that it is for me at least personally, the best YouTube app I could possibly think of and even beat the original we get on Android. As you can see, let's get into it once again. You have a great amount of options here in the settings. You can change, of course, the appearance again. Here we have transparent tiles. You can change the playback, keep selected, less set quality, play videos automatically, 60 frames per second as a beta option, continue playing when you leave the app. And I think it just works very well. Here you can see your subscriptions. You can change the modes. You can even turn off the, the, the overlay for the text and so on. So I think it works really nice. As you can see here, you have the quality options. So it is just a great working app. But maybe if you want to try another app, the alternative would be TubeCast, which pretty much works the same way. I really like this one as well. You have all the options here as well for your subscriptions, for your circles. And if you just check the settings real quick, once again, here they are. You also get theming options. You can change the long language, the tile, region, the quality the preload. So it is pretty much behaving very similar, it just looks a little bit different compared to MyTube. So let me know which of these two you actually prefer. I for right now use MyTube, but both do a great job. The next very important app for me would be Cast Center. I listen to a lot of podcasts and therefore I need a good app. And this one was free. If I would actually have a personal Windows phone yet, I would maybe go for Pocket Cast because it would be allow me to sync between all my devices to get always the same podcast. But otherwise, for right now, I use Cast Center because it has a lot of customization options. Here are the views. 
You also can change a lot of stuff about the playback, also updates, notifications. You can download the podcast, hear them later, change options here for storage, mobile network. So there is everything there. It works really reliable. If we check it, you get also all the stuff here, if you can see it. Once you tap on it, you have the options to play, delete, mark is played, add to favorites and go on the go. So it is a really nice working app. I haven't seen Pocket Cast on Windows Phone yet, but I, I'm at least very satisfied with this one so far. One very important app for me as a reviewer is TimeSense because it gives me a lot of statistics about the battery life. So I see how much I've used this device for, for example, right now, two hours and 51 and I'm at 42% of battery. So you can already see this device has a very good battery life. Also, I could see what I got yesterday. I got four hours and 30 minutes and with about 20% left over the course of the whole day, you get also statistics how long we have used for. So there are a lot of battery statistics and maybe that's not so useful for everyone, but at least for me as a reviewer, this app is essential. The next app I think should be on every Windows phone is VLC player because everyone needs a good media player and VLC is just that. It doesn't give you really any options just to change the theme, but otherwise it does all it has to do. Nothing fancy, it allows you to change the playback speed, give you subtitles, but the great thing about VLC is it supports pretty much every codec and you can play everything with it. And that's why I just like it so much. Another very important app, at least for me, is Splashtop Personal because it gives me remote access to my PC at home. I can use it from everywhere and I mostly use it at home. It is nothing really fancy and I know a lot of people actually prefer to use TeamViewer, but I use splashed up personal for years and years and it just does what I have to do. I can access all my files over my PC. I can see what's going on there. So I don't I don't know. It doesn't do anything fancy, but it just does what I needed to do in a really great way. And yeah, that's why I need it. The next app on the list would be DictCC. And at least for me, someone who isn't a native English speaker, it is very handy because sometimes I just need to know a certain word and I get the translation here, I know what it does, and I just need it sometimes, and it's really handy, it does what it needs to do, and it's really quick and easy. The last and really handy app on my list would be number one toolkit, and it would actually need too long to show off everything, but it has a lot, a lot of tools. You get like a ruler, you get a compass, you get here, if you can see here, if you want to measure something, if it's in the right angle, and you get a lot of more stuff. You get a, st a timer, a stopwatch, a world clock, a currency clock, a, my a recorder. And what is also really nice, you can set up tiles on your home screen for quick actions. Also for the media player, rotation lock and everything that. So there is really a tool for pretty much everything there. And I think this is really an essential app. And I'm, pff, I'm pretty sure everyone already knows this, but still, if you haven't done so these were my top apps. If you maybe have a better alternative for one of those for the needs I have, let me know in the comments because I would really like to know if there are maybe even better ones out there or what you think of those if you use them yourself. I hope this list of apps did help you if you maybe are new to Windows Phone and if you are a Windows Phone veteran, maybe even you can help me and give me better alternatives. So, okay, until next time, bye.